Hello Blender users, today I have some exciting news for you. A stable version of Blender 2.91 has been officially released on the Blender website. So before that we have been using a beta or alpha, sometimes even experimental versions of Blender 2.91. I myself have been using Blender 2.92 uh, for testing and uh, bug reporting. And I've already made a video about uh, the features that are coming up in Blender 2.92. So I'm just going to brush over the features that are coming to Blender 2.91 because I've already made a video about uh, Blender 2.92 which is a, a later version of Blender 2.1 which means it has more features than what are going to be in Blender 2.9. One. So if you want to watch that, you can go to that video. I'll be leaving a link in the description. But uh, what I want to go through is the flash screen project first. There are already tens of videos talking about the new features about Blender 2.91, including mine. So we're not just going to repeat the same things. We're just going to examine the splash screen project files so that we can see how the pros uh, do it. So if you want to get the splash screen project files, you just have to go to blender.org and then go to the download tab. And all you have to do is go to the demo files and you find all the project files for the splash screens uh, that Blender has. In this video, we're going to be checking out the one for Blender 2.9. So just click on that. You can see all these splash screens that are available. And then if you want to download them, you can just download them here. So this is the project file. I like going through projects like this because it gives you an idea of how the pros are doing it. And so if we go to look dev, you can see how the project file looks. And uh, I think the final version is supposed to be rendered uh, through EV because I've checked out the cycles results. They don't look that different from EV. So this is EV. Now, if we ch change to cycles, I don't think it looks that different. Okay, maybe uh, cycles looks more, way more amazing than uh, EV, but uh, yeah, we can still just examine uh, using EV because it's uh, a bit faster than a uh, cycle. So let's. Uh, uh, actually, I take this back. This could have been done in, uh, this could have been rendered using EV because you can see the details on these shadows here are not here in uh, cycles. But uh, if we switch to EV, you start to see those details. We just have to turn lights and our world scenes. You can see that uh, you get the same details in EV than uh, in cycles. So I think this project was meant to be uh, viewed in uh, EV. So I'm just going to switch to that now which is also nice because now we can easily preview uh, the results the new brush tool also supports collision uh, so i'm just going to go through them very quickly so that we can examine uh, the project file here because i think it's very more exciting than just uh, reading through this some new improvements are from the sculpt department you can create shapes using masks also have now a lasso tool that uh, you can draw shapes with also have this boolean improvement uh, so you, they are just showing you uh, the previous version of booleans and uh, what the new updated version of booleans you can see this is much stable and uh, produces more cleaner results than the previous one uh, we also have custom bevels i have already covered this as well you just create new custom bevels from uh, using uh, profiles you set here. If you sm simulate smoke, you can now convert it to, to a mesh and uh, yeah, create something interesting. Your creativity is what's going to limit you within with these new features. Now we also have this uh, volume mesh to volume. I've already covered this as well. You, you can convert your meshes into uh, clouds or uh, volumes, and I uh, can make some pretty nice. Uh, volumetric features. I think I've already shown how to animate uh, those clouds if you wanted to animate them. I'll also have a few updates in the uh, Glitz Pencil. There are quite a lot of new features and I think I've covered most of them in this video if you want to watch that. So let's just jump in into the more exciting things uh, like uh, examining this project file and uh, see how the pros are doing it. So uh, this grass here, if you just select this mesh, maybe let's isolate it for a second here and uh, here can see that uh, there is nothing complicated about it. You can see that uh, they're using very, very simple geometry to create uh, these leaves. There isn't a lot of detail to this, but uh, the way they merge that small detail into something, into a nice piece of work, you can see how, the, how this artist breaks up uh, the grass here using the, let me select the texture here, just so, so that I can, I can examine. So he's using a mass grave texture and uh, controlling the contrast just to make to get a bit of contrast here and uh, using the color ramp to create other uh, colors like that it gives the grass more variation and detail and then 
uses the emission you wouldn't expect you, know, you wouldn't expect him to use the emission shader for this but uh and see how he's using that at yeah so i think these clouds are causing this shadow yeah, they're adding some nice details here are uh, breaking up the foreground uh, from the background which i think looks uh, quite nice uh then so let's look at uh, if the if he does anything unique uh with that uh, because i didn't expect him to use the emission here the emission node here but uh I think that uh, yeah if you just use the diffuse let me just see if I use that shader diffuse here just want to see why he chose to use the emission instead of the diffuse I think he wanted to maintain the brightness in some areas but I don't think think uh, there is that much difference between that and this except this is a bit brighter and I think you can control the brightness a bit so yeah and uh, let's look at uh, the the particle system and see if there is anything unique about it so fees you can see, only has two particle systems and uh, I like how these particles are distributed I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if it's just a si one single mesh so let's uh, go to the particles and look at um, 200 so nothing much here so he's rendering one single mesh a cold mesh uh, let me see how that looks mesh 0.008 let me just look at that okay so it's a single mesh with a uh, just a few variations but i think you can also just use one if you if say we had i think you can also just use a single mesh like this so let me see if i switch this out if what i have in mind could work so if i instead of use this if i just chose one like this it is distributed as a single particle but uh, now if i add on children Okay, so I think he's using children's already, children already, uh, which I didn't expect. So you can have more, you, can, you may get the same result as he does here, but I think uh, he's using a combination of those, of the two setups I was thinking of. So he's not just using, he's using a group here and also adding uh, children's as well. So let me just reset uh, the project. What you will see most beginners do is uh, if, if they were creating a landscape like this, uh, they would have the entire landscape as a single mesh which is not is necessary and they're very inefficient because uh, if the camera is not going to uh, move this far to see that uh, these are separate meshes it's better to do this this way because uh, now you can determine how much resolution uh, particle resolution you want on this mesh and uh, you can reduce uh, the number of particles on the on this bottom one because you don't need as many uh, particles on this side and uh, if I was creating this I would also not add as add the particles here I would distribute most of the particles this side as the camera was uh, going to view that but I think he did it this way because uh, he may not have uh, been sure which angle to choose uh, so let me just look at a different different angles here oh actually I think the reason why he did, did it that way, uh, what I mean here is that, uh, and see, if you're just rendering this view here, then, which is basically just uh, um, from this side uh, to this side, then particles this side uh, would be wasteful, but uh, I think the reason he's, he's adding these particles this side is because he has multiple angles to view from, and uh, I didn't see realize that at first so let's go through those camera angles uh let's say we have camera one we have camera one yeah, so if you double click on these camera icons you can see you can go through different camera views so you can see now yeah if you're going to use multiple camera views maybe it, it might be necessary for you to add those particles so i think that's why he has uh, those particles as well there how that looks let me see how he made these gold rays here because i think they look quite interesting so if we go to object mode we have i think these are what are 
creating the gold rays and uh, okay let's first examine this let me first turn off the volume shading so it's just uh, a gradient texture with a car ramp to control the contrast and uh, then uh, this should and um, he fits in the emission so and uh, then fit this into the volume shader okay so I've never used I never thought of using a single plane as a volume shader I never really thought uh, just a plane as a plane can now uh, work for a volume shader but I guess there is no reason why it shouldn't so he's using these as the gold rays I don't see them that much so if I bring this up you can see actually this is actually more I mean I never even thought of this this is a better way to create volume uh, to create fog than uh, just using gas a cube so I think this is a uh, quite interesting I never thought of and I'm actually I mean just be start using this uh, for all my projects instead of uh, just uh, and i think if you wanted you can uh, add in you can mimic volumetric shadows by uh, let's add in a few nodes here so i can make this super bright and then add this darker if i want if you want uh, to kind of mimic shadows volumetric shadows let me see if uh because uh, i'm getting new ideas here because the way i've been work doing it is uh i just create a cube and then give it a principal volume shader but i think this is a more efficient way to do it and that's what i love about examining these project files you learn a lot from it uh, than you would just do from just watching basic tutorials you see how the pro pros are doing it so i think if i if you add a texture a noise texture let me see how this would look let me first get rid of uh, this volume so that i can just preview it as a basic shader and i added I scale this down so that uh, is uh, we have streaks of light like that we, we would just rotate the mesh mix these two and uh, then we can fit this use this as the factor instead of what he had here and then use this for the principal uh, for the volume shader then you can just control and if we add it, some rotation to this and uh, reduced the strength i think i increased the strength here quite a bit so points you can see that uh, blend this a bit more so i think uh, instead of just doing going through a list of uh, new features which uh, i think blender blender website has already done uh, very nicely i'll just always go through the and examine the project files because i think that's you, you learn more from that uh, than uh, just going through a list of new features thank you for watching i'll see you in another video